I think it's very uh, good news that after months of holding strong, of demonstrating that our commitment to local journalism, to strong independent journalists getting paid for their work, uh, that Google has agreed uh, to properly support journalists, including local journalism. Unfortunately, Meta continues to completely abdicate any responsibility towards uh, democratic institutions and even stability, uh, but we're going to continue to work positively in, in those areas. The Prime Minister there celebrating a deal today with Google on the government's contested online news act, but acknowledging that the Fed still don't have a deal with Meta, the company that owns Facebook and Instagram. They're blocking currently Canadian news on their platform. C18 was brought in, the government says, to force digital giants to compensate media companies like this one, CTV News, for linking to their content. But both Google and Meta came out against the bill, saying they didn't want to accept unlimited financial liability for news links. The liability they have assumed, according to today, today's deal, is about $100 million annually indexed to inflation. Elliot Hughes, our front bench, I should say, is here. Elliot Hughes is a political commentator and senior associate with Summa Strategies. He's a former senior advisor to liberal finance and defense ministers. Gary Marr is a former Alberta cabinet minister and MLA. He's now the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. Anne McGrath is national director of the NDP. And Marika Walsh is a senior political reporter with the Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Marika, what's your sense of whether on, the, on balance this is a win for the feds? Um, I think it's a face saving in a sense for the feds, but it's certainly a climb down. I know the prime minister is, is describing it as the government standing strong, but they've given Google quite the deal from the $172 million that the bill was supposed to cost the company every year to the about $100 million that they're now going to be paying. So I think it's a win for the government or a face saving for the government in the sense that they had to somehow figure out a way around this, that they wouldn't lose, lose Google. Um, but it certainly is a far cry from what they promised in the bill yeah, just, and what they said was needed in that bill. Right. And just to be clear, what Google had essentially threatened and to do was as of December 19th, when the bill comes into force, when it, the law comes into force, the regulations come into force, uh, they you would no longer be able to like Google us, you know, what happened in this story and a, and a Canadian news link would appear, essentially blocking in the way that Meta has blocked Canadi any Canadian news from appearing on, on either of, of its platforms. Do you think that... This is kind of like damage. You know, they had to do some damage control. They had because there was a lot of blowback to it, and they managed to get one deal at least. Yeah, and I think it was always the case that Google was going to be. If there was going to be a deal anywhere, right. it was going to be with Google and not with Facebook. So, so, and, and I don't think there's a lot of public sympathy for the web giants. Uh, to be honest, I think that people are not really all that comfortable with how much power um, they seem to have and how willing they seem to be to use it, um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, without a lot of consequences. So, I mean, I think it, I, I would agree with Marika. I think it is a bit of a face-saving thing. Um, I, I, thought that the, I thought that the bill was a good bill, the Bill C-18. I thought it was a good bill. I think there was a lot of support for it. I think it's unfortunate that uh, somehow it appears that nobody thought about what the next steps were going to be and what the consequences and the blowback was going to be and and recognizing how much power these web giants have that they would be able to actually um you know, do what they've been, do what they've been doing. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Elliot. I'm wondering, sort of, as the government approached this from a political perspective, like there's a policy perspective, obviously, but as a, from a political perspective, if they did or didn't anticipate the reaction that the bill did create, or if if in the if in the case they did, maybe they thought to Anne's point, well, that's that's okay because we don't think they're winning a lot of favor these big companies with Canadians. Yeah, just just before jumping in, just would disclose that we we do do some work with Google as well. So uh, just as a heads up there, um, look, I think that's right. I think the, the the government understood that that there potentially was a political win here, and I think you what you saw was the prime minister um, sort of taking that victory lap. But I think at the end of the day, this is really good news for sort of good news all around. Good news for a lot of people. It's good news, I think, for the new minister Pascal Saint-Onge, who comes in was given a pretty tough deck of cards to handle and, and, and I think came out with a victory. Uh, I think it's good for Google in the sense that they get to continue to operate and, and, and support small businesses, support publishers. Publishers were very happy uh, to, with today's news. The government, I think, can take a victory lap uh, to say, look, we were able to come up with a pragmatic deal and we were able to get something done here. And I think ultimately Canadians are going to benefit from this news as well. It's, I think it's been pointing out Unfortunately, you know, Meta and Instagram have decided not to, to come to this sort of constructive approach. 
which is unfortunate because at the end of the day, this is about helping Canadians. But yes, to answer your point, your question directly, I think the government was happy to take this fight, but I think where it landed was a good place for all players involved. On the meta part of this, uh, Gary, they, they certainly do not seem like they're inclined at any point in this discussion so far to, to land a deal with the government. They also, you know, point out, for example, in um, some of their responses over the past that, like, Reuters had a report over the month, uh, or, sorry, over the summer saying that Facebook usage, usage hadn't even changed since the ban. They, they continue to insist that, like, news isn't a big part of what they do or their business. Does that decrease the, the leverage that the federal government might have had? I think it probably does, but I, I would go back to what uh, Marika said. I, I think this was a face-saving exercise for the federal government. And just by way of background, C-18 was largely modeled after uh, what was done in Australia. And uh, so uh, you may agree or disagree with the objectives of the legislation, but um, it, it hasn't been completely successful. And I, I think you're right that, um, that Facebook uh, and Insta having not come to the table um, you know, maybe there's, the federal government doesn't have that much leverage over them. But I also want to point out that uh, this may become a trade issue vis-a-vis -vis the United States. We've got the uh, uh, NAFTA coming up for renewal in, in a couple of years. And there are trade irritants that, uh, that exist. Uh, supply management is one of them. Labor mobility is a second one. Uh, but this one might become a third one where the United States trade representative might view this as being an inappropriate taxation of a U.S. domiciled company that um, uh, that should not be uh, so taxed and, and uh, may raise this as uh, an irritant uh, that may make it more difficult to get a renewal of NAFTA. It speaks more largely, Marika, to like this this whole conversation that's being had about the role of these big tech, technological big tech giants, basically, and uh, sort of how, how much the government regulates slash taxes and does mm -hmm. it. Because there's a whole conversation now about the digital tax, for example, and uh, the fact that that's part of the legislation that the government's introducing around the fall economic statement and. It was supposed to be done in concert with other parts of the world, and now it doesn't seem like, like we, we, we seem a bit offside with some, but at the same time, like Anne said, it's, it's a fight the government seems to want to have. It's a fight they seem to want to have, but I think C-18 showed that they don't necessarily know where it goes. They don't necessarily yeah. see all the ramifications. And sort of a big question for me now is what is the point of C-18? Google has a carve out. Meta isn't playing game. Was C18 just a bargaining chip? Maybe the next companies. I don't Maybe know. the next yeah. companies. It's but it, it just is a threshold. bit like, okay, like my yeah. colleague, poor Mari Wolf, has gone through all this time studying C18, <laughs> and now I'm a bit confused who it applies to. What does it mean about AI as well? Like, you know, when we get towards the AI stuff, like this is, these are giants that have little or no democratic oversight. Yeah, they're private companies, and, yep. and the regulations are 30 years behind, yep. basically. But they have a big AI. impact on our democracy and on our, and on our way of life, absolutely. Well, yeah. in, in AI's case, they, they threaten humanity, by some people <laughs> would tell us.